Hey everyone, so today I thought I would go over a really old painting of mine and not only critique it, but um, overpaint it. So I was initially just going to do a redraw of this, but I started and I ended up not quite feeling it. Um, I think this is a, a really bad painting to try to redraw because uh, the um, concept is so simple that there's really not much to change other than technical problems, so <laughs> I thought it would be better just to overpaint it and hopefully it can help some of you and um, hopefully you guys can feel good about how bad I used to be. <laughs> so this is a painting from 2014, so um, that's <laughs> how many years is that ago? So that's five years ago and um, this is a painting of Zoe Castillo from Dreamfall Chapters. It didn't end up turning out that well, and there's a variety of reasons for that, which I will go over. So, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my layer, and I don't know where to start, really, because there's a lot of stuff wrong with this painting. But I do think the biggest issue is uh, the light environment. If you don't know what a light environment is, it's essentially that if a scene or a room or a place is lit in a certain way, for example here, um, it's nighttime and there's an implications of some sort of fire. Um, so the light environment in this scene is that it's nighttime and there's some firelight coming. So any object you place in the scene has to adopt that light environment or it will look out of place. This character looks insanely out of place and that's because she's not meshing with light environment at all. I made like a feeble attempt at like including her somehow with these two lights on, on the side of her. Um, but the main issue is that she has this spotlight on her face. That's just making her completely separate from the background. And it's just making the whole piece really jarring. So that's something I'm gonna focus on a lot um, in my overpaint. Because one, it's such a huge issue. And two, because it's an issue a lot of people um, have. Like, when people start painting in color and values, uh, stuff like this kind of gets thrown to the wayside a lot. And then eventually, as you develop your eye, you start to realize, oh, it doesn't look good because it's not mashing. So that's the first big issue. The second big issue, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you can already spot, is that her face is rendered really strangely. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of form. It looks very flat. Uh, there's like a weird, weird line dependency happening here, especially around her nose. Um, she has kind of an expression, but it's ki also kind of like a vacant stare. It's just a lot of weirdness going on with the face and her proportions, and especially the values of the face. If we look at it in black and white, you can see how incredibly flat it is, and then the nose is just like this dark spot. So kind of feed feeding into that issue of her face, uh, there's also just an issue of her hair kind of looking like a huge mop on top of her head. Uh, it's obscuring the edges of her face, which again is contributing to that weirdness. And it's just like too much. It doesn't have any sort of shape to it. And lastly, or not really lastly, but the, the third like big jarring issue is just how much photo bashing I used here and how poorly I did it. So I'm sure you've all noticed the horrible texture that I laid, laid on top of a scarf. I didn't know how to paint cloth and instead of figuring out how to paint cloth, I just like did a half-assed effort and then I like pasted a texture on top of it to make it look more like an actual knitted scarf. Um, as you can see, I didn't like bend it to fit the um, folds at all. I just kind of erased it in the shadows, hoping it would look better. Um, and obviously that didn't work very well. So there's also a lot of photo bashing going on in the background. I actually think I didn't paint any of this. Um, for context, if you haven't played the game, this entire background, I'm pretty sure I just took from an in-game screenshot or like a promotional video or something because all these stars are so low res 
and you can like very clearly see that they're not painted and this tree as well I think I did some rough overpainting just to like attempt to blend it out um, these mountains as well for some reason I felt like there had to be like detail in the mountains I could have just done like a silhouette like this for all of them um, but instead I opted for like a really bad photo bash mountain which I attempted to smooth out I also love how <laughs> this mountain in the background has like stars shining through it so I didn't even bother to like make sure everything was like integrated correctly like here too there's a mountain and there's stars I'm not sure what I was thinking I think I was probably just lazy and then on top of that there's issues of rendering brushwork um, just a lot of bad techniques overall and we'll get to that but first I think I'm gonna just try to straighten out the light environment as best as I can uh, and I think to start we just have to darken her face and what I think I'm gonna do is I, I do still want to keep some light on her face because it's a portrait and if the entire face is just like dark like it would be if she was actually outside during the night um, then we kind of lose a big important element of the painting so I'm gonna cheat a bit and I'm going to still keep her face light but instead of having like this weird warm studio lighting on her I'm gonna change that to being like a subtle moonlight and then I'm also going to uh, make the most of this firelight and kind of have that on her actual face instead of just like highlighting the side of her scarf so I'm just going to grab a big soft brush and I'm going to put it on her light and we'll see what we can do so I'm just kind of trying to get rid of some of those warm tones and I'm just darkening her entire face and then we'll bring the light back into it uh, later I'll also make the background a bit darker the background the sky in the actual game is very like blue and magical and that's nice but uh, again for the light environment's sake we're just gonna make it a bit darker so I feel like the cropping of this painting is a bit awkward. It's like she's very like in your face and it's kind of uncomfortable. I don't immediately see a solution to that though, but I think just giving her a bit more space all around could probably help. Like maybe we should see the top of her head. See, this is why I kind of wanted to do the redraw, because her pose is just so weird and I'm not sure how I could really fix it. Okay, but I think what I just did, like straightening her out a bit, helped. It's gonna be a very messy overpaint, like don't expect anything professional. If I was doing this for a student, I think I would do it a lot more carefully, but I just want to like fix the issues as quickly as possible. Yeah, so I think that's actually better. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to start just like uh, making the hair a bit less obnoxious so we can actually see more of her face and I bet the the face shape doesn't really make sense when I start erasing out the hair because I probably didn't think of that I probably just like painted the hair and the face at the same time and I didn't stop to think like what her skull looks like underneath it all So her face is very white and weird under here, god. So this is what happens when you have like, you have an element that's going on top of the head somehow, like if you have horns or a lot of hair or a hat, if you paint that hat in or the hair in at the same time as you're painting the sketch for the rest of the body, um, you're gonna end up with these weird like structural faults I guess 
because you're not considering what the face looks like underneath that object. So here what I did was I sketched the hair and the face at the same time and I was just concerned with like how the, the features that were actually vis visible would show up. I didn't think about what the face actually looks like in entirety. So what you need to do uh, when you have an object that will kind of cover up your character a bit is you have to sketch the character as just like a naked f full figure um, before you start putting clothes on them, before you start putting hair on them, before you start putting horns on them. Uh, so you have like a complete overview of what their body and their face and their head looks like. And then once you kind of nail that down, then you can start putting those elements on top of it. And then you'll ensure that your structure is accurate. And you'll avoid like weird round faces like this. There's like this shadow here. Like this. That makes no sense. The shadow would go more like this and it will be really subtle. So I'm just gonna erase that. And now you can really see how the mouth just looks like it's it's pasted on there. It doesn't look like it's a part of her face. And, and that that's kind of the same, um, the same for her eyes and her nose as well. All her features are essentially just pasted on top of like this egg. You can really see it here how There's no integration of the features and there's no kind of concern about the, the planes of her actual head shape. Something that's really important to do when you're painting a face is to just consider how everything is connected. Um, a face is not two eyes, a nose and a mouth. A face is the whole head and <laughs> the features are embedded in that head and, and they need to have a connection between them. So you really need to study cheeks and the planes of the head. Uh, something that's been really helpful for me is, st is studying the Asaro head and studying skulls. So you actually know what the structure is like. So you're able to kind of imply all those connections with like big gradial shadows and all of that stuff that makes the face look complete and not like just a series of features because what happens with a lot of young artists is um, they love painting eyes, they love painting noses and mouths um, and so they sketch that all the time in their sketchbooks uh, and that's what I did. I, I would sketch eyes all the time in like um, my notebooks and stuff. So I would like go all in on the eyes, um, slightly less in on the nose and mouth, but then I never really stopped to consider the rest of the face and, and this is what you end up with when you do that. So I'm going to blend out, let's be on the right layer, <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to blend out the lips, oh god I'm still on the wrong layer, professional artist here, I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to blend this out because this edge is just way too harsh, it looks like she's wearing uh, a really ugly shade of lipstick. Just gonna soften this all up. And also, there just needs to be more more implied volume on things. So I have the upper lip and the lower lip to be at the exact same value. Um, the upper lip is kind of I suck at explaining this, but if you look, look at the upper lip from the side, it's essentially curving inwards like this. So you have like the nose, that's not a nose, the nose, and then the lip kind of goes like this. And then the upper lip, the lower lip, I mean, kind of comes back out like that. So this lip will be catching light. If the light is coming from above, this lip will catch light. And the bottom of this lip will not. So. That needs to be reflected in this drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lighten up the lip and I'm also going to do that thing with fading it out. I'm also going to fade out the corners of her mouth. They're also way too harsh. Again, this is what connecting the features is all about. Making sure that the lips are kind of blending into the cheeks. Not too much, but we wanna apply. 
I'll probably lose her expression as I'm doing this. And I'm gonna try to bring that back in the end. Um, or I'm gonna try to strengthen her expression in the end. Because it was pretty weak already. But now I'm really just focused on technicalities. Uh, that's the thing with overpaints. You kind of end up losing a lot of personality as you go. Um, which is unfortunate, but that's just gonna happen. I will be trying to not just bring it back, but to improve it at the end though. We haven't really established established light source yet, but with ambient light, uh, especially overhead ambient light, the chin will always be somewhat lit because again, like it comes down to form and what plane is facing out the most will catch the most light and the chin protrudes a lot from the face. The same thing goes for the nose. That's why this nose looks so weird. It's because the nose itself is darker than the cheeks, for example. Um, and really, the tip of the nose should be one of the lightest things on the face. Uh, because again, it's just protruding so much from the face. So if you don't have that value change, it's gonna look flat. So I'm gonna take this weird little highlight here and I'm just gonna extend that. Also, there doesn't need to be such a harsh shadow right here. Women don't have that big a brow bone, so you won't really- you'll get a shadow like that, but it will be very subtle. I'm also going to reduce these shadows on the side of her nose, they're just way too dark and harsh. And finally, I think her nose just generally needs to be a lot bigger. It's very tiny. gonna fade out these weird lines here you won't get lines this harsh on the face it's just because I didn't know how to imply form and I knew that I knew that there's like nostril nostrils here and that the nose kind of ends there but I didn't know how to show that with, with value so I just put a line there instead and that's that's what line dependency is it's where you don't know how to imply form so you just put lines everywhere instead So what I'm imagining when I'm shading this nose is I'm imagining the planes of the entire face. So what that kind of roughly looks like, um, and there's a lot of different ways of doing this. This is just like what I'm envisioning in my head, so it's not going to be fully accurate. But you kind of have like the brow bone that's curving in like this, and then you have the actual bridge of the nose. And the tip of the nose is kind of, on some people, it's kind of protruding out a bit more. And then the underside of the nose, that will catch the shadow. And then the nostrils, I kind of, well not the nostrils, but like nose wings. Um, half of them will be in dark, half of them will catch a bit of light. And then you have kind of the side planes that are going down like this. Note that in my original drawing, I had them like this, like very small, but really they go out a lot. Like if you touch your own face and you touch like, and you touch like the sides of your nose and drag the fingers down towards your cheeks, you'll kind of notice that it's a very gradual slope. And it kind of follows the under eyes. See how like this line can continue going around the eye sockets like that. See everything is connected at the same in the same way that the tops of the nostrils kind of go down. Not like that. <laughs> they kind of go down and they meet the mouth, and then again that kind of meets this line with the cheekbones, and every little thing can kind of be dragged into these lines and can be connected. Um, and this is basically your guide for where to shade, um, both with a hard light choice and just with ambient lights. 
so generally like and this is a very simplified guide like don't come for me but you can kind of know like after a while you kind of learn the general places where light will hit and that makes it so much easier to just like get the form of your faces right uh, so the forehead will usually be lit but then the side planes of the forehead will usually be a bit more um dark and actually uh, there's kind of three planes of the forehead like if it's more like this if that makes any sense and like you'll get the most light up here and then it will kind of fade down and then it'll kind of be like this with just a straight up overhead light uh, the cheekbones will always be kind of highlighted and then they will fade down be careful not to make like a harsh line here because that will make your face super unappealing you have to be sure to fade it out Anything off the other side, then the, the nose bridge will be very bright. The chin, this area will catch a bit of light because again, it's just facing up. It's facing up towards the sky. And so, like big shadows to look out for is the eye sockets. This is gonna look very creepy. It's all it's all that it's looking pretty creepy. Um, the eye sockets underneath the cheekbones and around the jawline. And just underneath the nose, underneath the lips, underneath the chin. Obviously there's a lot more to it than that and by studying things like the skull and the Asaro head you will start to see all the subtleties and you'll be able to implement them into your painting. Another very helpful way to just get this right uh, is to just use tons of reference. I said this in every single video but uh, if you use reference you can very clearly see where all of this is happening. So again, just a very simplified guide, but that's kind of how I think of it when I'm painting. I kind of envision all these lines, especially if I'm having trouble uh, with where to place a light. I'll just draw these like straight on top of my illustration um, and I'll kind of go from there with placing the light. So that was a long tangent to explain how I'm going to shade the nose. Um, so the tip should be a bit lighter. That's okay for now. I'll go over all of this again once we have the lighting. I just want to make sure the structure is there before I start messing with the lighting. Um, if I start applying lighting to the face that had really bad form, um, I'm just gonna have to redo that. And it's good to have your structure down before you start putting like superficial elements on top of it. So lastly, we have the eyes and I think the eyes are like a bit too big and her eyebrows are way too low. Her eyebrows are nearly like glued to her upper um, eyelid and the eye sockets are so dark. So I'm just gonna like tuck this in a bit. She has like a lot of eyeliner going on, which is making her eyes look very big. Like her actual eye is this big but I like gave her so much of an edge that like they appeared this big. Which is a typical mistake. Um, I think a lot of the reason was because I used to paint uh, very stylized. Like I used to paint uh, in more of a, an anime style. And when I painted this, I was still, I was like just starting to paint in semi-realism and I still had a lot of those really bad habits from like my line art anime face so again this is the reason why <laughs> this is the reason why teachers get mad at you if you paint anime because you, ha you kind of have to learn realism first or you should learn realism first because then you kind of circumvent all these stupid beginner mistakes um, that you don't really have to go through. And then you can, once you learn realism, you can go into anime after that if you want. Okay, so essentially I just took away all that blackness around her eyes. Now she looks like an entirely different person, but 
she looks a bit more proportionate. I'm also going to just reduce the size of her irises because they're also super large. And I'm just going to get rid of that, hi that highlight, it's way too bright. Okay. I'm going to give her some more shadow underneath her eye. Again, going back to this, there would be shadow there under eye circles. Um, and also just because of the indent of the eye sockets themselves. Um, we're gonna get back to the eyes, they look very messy right now, but first I want to fix her eyebrows, so... Again, let's look at this. So, the eye sockets are kind of like this. You can kind of envision them as triangles, or a diamond, I mean, like this. And then you kind of get the eyebrow, like, on top of that, kind of arching around like this. In my original drawing, I have the eyebrow pretty much glued to like the edge of um, the eye socket, and it works a bit better now that I've reduced her eye size because that naturally brought them down a bit. But it's still um, very strange. I'm just gonna make them a bit higher, and I'm also going to make them a lot smoother. These eyebrows are so hard, um, and you can get like really. Um, Obviously, you can get really sharp eyebrows if you use makeup. And there's nothing wrong with painting characters who wear makeup, but it will still not look like, look like this. Um, it will be more faded, it will be more affected by the lights, uh, it will not just be like pasted on like what I had here. I'm also making sure to highlight the brow bone. Like these. Now I'm just going to go over the soft brush and just blend out some of my brush marks. A big trick to see if the form is reading and if your big gradual shadows are where they need to be is just zooming out. It really allows you to see the form a lot better than when you're really zoomed in because you get a nice overview. You can also do that in the navigator. So I think her face overall looks a lot better. Uh, her nose is still a bit small, her forehead is very large, the hair is looking all wonky. But it's better, it's getting there. So this is what we were working with, that's what we have now. So this is kind of more appealing in a way, because she looks prettier. Now she just looks like very strange, her head is so big. <laughs> but we're gonna fix that. Um, what I'm gonna do now, it's kind of scary, I'm gonna flip the image, I should have done this earlier. Uh, now, if if there were mistakes in terms of like angles in this painting, which there sure, surely were, I've essentially just painted on top of them, so I'm kind of nervous to see what it will look like flipped. Okay, it's not horrible, but it's it's a bit uh, wonky for sure. I'm just gonna fix that up. Nothing really to say about that. It's like your face shouldn't be skewed to one side. I'm also just going to pull in a bit of liquify to make my life easier. And with that I'm also going to pull in her hair a bit more. Her hair is standing so much like off her, off her head. It's like she has just way too much volume or a really weird and bad wig. Okay, that's better. And it's bothering me so much I can't not do anything about it. I'm just going to pull the hair in. Hair will always like stand a bit off the skull. Like a lot of people, when they start painting, they paint the hair kind of like at the same level as the edge of the head, and it looks like the hair is glued on. Hair naturally has a lot of volume to it. Um, in literally every person, unless their hair is filled with oil, which I think even then it would stand off the skull because it just has mass and it's also growing outward. Uh, so it will stand off the head a bit, but this much. <laughs> This is just a crazy amount. Uh, we should take it down to here, I think. 
Okay, so now I feel better about the structure. I'm going to start bringing in some light. You can't bring in light before you know what your forms are like, because when deciding where to place your lighting, you should really think about how it's going to enhance the forms. If it's not enhancing the forms, um, you should change the position of your light, essentially. So, again, I'm gonna do kind of that moonlight action. I'm gonna go for like a light blue, put this on... Uh, I'll try overlay first, it might not be strong enough, but... So I'm treating it as if it's coming... Not straight from above, but like pretty much. And like straight on her. Although I guess it might look better if we do... Yeah, I'm gonna do like a subtle, subtle from the side light, uh, because then we'll get more darkness on this side, and then we can play up the firelight in the in those shadows. And the awesome thing about applying the light in a separate layer is, I can just erase out any part where I want a hard shadow. If you're cur curious about this black and white layer, um, the reason I have this is so I can very easily check the values at any time. Um, it's kind of hard to paint in values and color at the same time uh, because there's just a lot of things to keep track of. So a very easy way to kind of make sure you're on the right track is to just turn your painting black and white every so often so you can see impure values. Um, removed from the distraction of colors, like how is your piece working? Is this reading? Is everything um, looking voluminous enough? How is my value groupings? You know, you can see that super easily. Uh, if you just take um, a layer on top of all your other layers, fill it with black and put it to color mode and you can very easily just toggle it on and off as often as you feel like it. A lot of people uh, get tripped up with colors um, and a lot of times the colors look weird because the value structure isn't there. Um, so make sure to always have this layer so you can just check. Everyone needs to check this. Um, super advanced artists use this sort of layer uh, and beginners use it too. So. And then it also needs to hit the rest of our body, uh, which isn't really structured yet, but we can just kind of imply it a bit. Um, like, another big issue with my first painting was that the light was hitting her face, but the light isn't hitting her hair, it's not hitting her scarf, it's not hitting her arm over here. It's like her face is in a completely different space than all of the rest of her and the background. Uh, it's completely separate and it just makes it look so uncanny. So whenever you have a strong light source, make sure it's cohesive across the entire painting. Anything that is in the cone of light will get lit up. You have to really make sure you're doing that. and. Um, here I think I, I kind of tried to put some of the lighting on her scarf, but I wasn't sure like what to do. Again, I didn't know how to paint cloth, and I don't think I brought in that much reference or anything to really help myself. Um, and so I just like timidly put in some <laughs> vague light. It's not even like from the right direction, it would be more like over here. So what you need to do when you encounter something like that is you need to take a step back and you need to do a study. Or if you don't have time, which you probably do, but sometimes you don't, um, just do some observation. And that will help you out a ton. You just need to take a step back, you know. Um, so again, here I'm very careful to bring it back. And I'm gonna switch to hard light on a separate layer because overlay isn't really doing it for me. 
Again, I'm gonna fix this up later, but for now, it does the trick. Okay, so we have that down. Now what I'm gonna do is... I'm going to darken the rest of her slightly. Again, it's nighttime, she's outside. Wherever the light doesn't hit, it will be kind of dark and blue. So, she still has like some very warm tones in her face. I'm gonna try to just like... Slightly remove that. This is again a result of the light environment. Um, at night, uh, especially when the moon is out, everything will kind of be washed in this blue light. Um, so a lot of red tones, a lot of warm tones, they will kind of just disappear unless you have another light source there um, that's bringing in that warm light. Again, a really good way to understand how this all works because it's really hard to like know exactly what the colors will do um, is to do studies, photo studies, studies from life, film studies. All of this is very helpful to understanding light environments and how they affect colors. Because sometimes you think you know and you do a study and you're like, whoa. <laughs> Like, why is, there, why is there purple here? Like, I thought this painting was teal. Like, you discover all these weird subtleties uh, that will really take your paintings to the next level. Yeah, this doesn't need to be that intense. We can still keep her artificially bright. Again, I want to stress that if this had been a real person outside during the nighttime, she would be... Like... <laughs> this is what we would see, really. Um... Everything gets so dark at night, and it's very hard to paint. To do like a character painting where the character is important. Um, and showing the, the face and the outfit of that character. It's very hard to do that completely realistically. So, once you know, once you know how real nighttime works, it's okay to kind of bend the rules a bit. Just to make your paintings look as good as they possibly can. So that's why I'm making her face a bit more light than it really would be. I'm making her a bit more light than she really would be. Um, that's just what I have to do to make this painting work. It's a portrait. It's really not that great if you can't see the face, unless you, I was going for like a very artistic vibe. Um, I can't believe I just said vibe. I'm very ashamed of myself. <laughs> but, but yeah, we're going for like a quasi-realistic lighting setup here. Lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this weird light here. Um, I wanna briefly touch on this while I can. So this is something, again, a lot of beginners get wrong. Um, when you're painting uh, a rim light or um, like a backlight, any sort of secondary light source that's kind of just highlighting the edge of a character. It doesn't just kind of go around the edge like this. Like this, the way I did this, it doesn't take the form into account at all. It completely ignores the form of the object. Same thing on this side. It's following the hair here, but then on the scarf, it's just like contouring the edges. And also like going in towards the um, folds, it just makes no sense. In reality, um, let's say this light is coming kind of from above. I'm really bad at painting these arrows, it's embarrassing. Like, let's say it's coming in like kind of from above and behind. It would be hitting the forms in a very different way. And you would get places where it just doesn't hit at all because the plane is facing away from the light source. And you would get places where it's very intense. And you need to think about all that when you're painting in a light like this. How would it really affect my subject? You know? Um, so... Don't just do this thing makes me so sad. This is not how light behaves. Um, you don't just get like a bright outline of your <laughs> object. So 
So I'm going to just erase all this because it's not great. So what I want to do is I want to use this light for all it's worth. Um, and what that means is I don't want to just like highlight the side of her scarf. That's not interesting. I don't want to pull a viewer there. I want to pull the viewer to her face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the light source from where before it was kind of behind her to the side. I'm going to just shift it to the front of her, but still the side. So I'm going to try to do kind of a dark saturated color. So again, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of the planes. So that is coming from below and up. Where would this hit? That's all I'm thinking about when I'm placing lights. You know, I'm really not sure how much of the scarf will be highlighted. It's very hard because I don't really have a scarf to highlight right now, but I think it will be something like this. And then keep in mind that because the the scarf is kind of folding, again, if you look at it from the side, the scarf is kind of like folding, very simplified, Jesus, like this. So if you have the light coming, um, don't mind me. If you have the light coming up like this, parts of it would just be like, it would get obscured by the scarf itself. Like the scarf would cast shadows on the scarf. So you wouldn't get like a full highlight along every fold. Parts of the fold would just be like obscured by each other. I'm gonna work that in a bit more once we once we actually paint the scarf though. Same thing goes for the hair. She doesn't have any hair right now, but I can just like pretend she does. So it's not that much of a value difference because again, orange red light is so muted. It's so kind of dark um, that you mostly see it in color, but that's okay. And keep in mind the further away the light gets from the light source, the more muted it will be. So all the way up here, we can soften it. And then down here, which is very close to the fire, um, it will be a bit more intense. So back to what I was mentioning earlier about um, placing your light to always enhance your form. What I mean by that is um, now I've kind of highlighted her face in a pretty appealing way. Um, I am highlighting her cheekbones, her lips, I'm bringing focus to the focal point and I'm also not kind of harshening up her features in any way. What I could have done, for example, is maybe I could have placed the light source directly above or below her face. Like what if it was like straight on? Then what would happen is we would get this very creepy weird face going on. This is what I mean by enhancing your form. This sort of lighting is great if you want to paint a super scary um, and intimidating character. It's not great if you want to paint the protagonist of a game who is by all counts a very sweet character. You don't want her to look like this. Um, so, so lighting can really like change your subject dramatically. This lighting is not appealing, but that's why it's it works so well for like evil, horrible characters, um, because ugliness is often attributed to um, characters with low morale, and that's just a stereotype. Um, it's unfortunate, unfortunate in some ways, but in character design, you have to really um, take some of those um, archetypes into account when designing. Um, because that's what people respond to. So, nice side view is better than super harsh bottom view. Um, and this goes for any any way you're choosing to light your subjects. Like, 
Some angles of light will give you like a really weird hard shadows across the face. Um, if you get that and you zoom out and it's like, oh, my character looks super ugly with the shadow. You need to just switch the light source, unless you want the character to look ugly, but... Um, but it's really more about having like nice form than um, appeal, you know? Uh, nice form equals appeal in a lot of ways. Uh, you just want to make sure your shapes read, and if you put a weird hard shadow across your shape, um, it's gonna fuck up the readability. Okay, so next step is painting in her hair. Uh, <laughs> I feel a bit desperate to just make her look pretty now because she looks so weird. Um, I'm just gonna merge everything, uh, but first I'm gonna show you before and after. Look how much less flat it looks and how much more interesting it is. I did kind of lose the edge of her shoulder here, which I actually kind of liked about this version. So I'm going to try to work that back in um, later on, but yeah, for now, let's merge everything down and start doing something about this hair situation. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to paint in her ears. Uh, <laughs> You might be thinking, why in the world would I bother doing this? Uh, because the ears aren't gonna be visible. Um, again, this comes down to what I mentioned earlier. Painting the stuff that's going to go underneath before you start worrying about um, the objects on top. I like painting in the ears so because that makes it easier to see if my face is structurally sound. And it also makes it easier to paint the hair in and, and make it fall away, that would be natural. If you ever have trouble painting ears, uh, the general rule is that they start at the kind of end of the eyebrow and they stop at the nose. So she's got some nice mushy ears. Now we can start working on the hair. I'm also going to just like, to give myself as clean a slate as possible, I'm gonna reduce this stuff that's going on here a bit more. Like that. Okay, so I might just... Actually, I'm gonna pull a picture from the game. Because I still want this to be somewhat accurate to the character. Usually I have all my reference either on a second monitor or in a pure ref on top of my Photoshop. But just to show you guys, I'm gonna place it here. Actually, before I even continue, uh, I'm gonna make the blacks less black. Like, look at this. Oh, you can't see it. Um, yeah, my levels are just way too dark. I'm gonna reduce the black. You do that by bringing up the minimum output level. And... Let's see. So this is uh, a lot easier to work with now that we don't have so much like straight up blacks. It's very easy again when you're painting a night scene. Because it's so dark it's easy to end up with a lot of like, pure blacks. Um, and that's another thing that will really make your painting hard to work with. I'm gonna reduce the size of her face itself because now that we have the hair back on, I'm just really seeing how how big it is. Yeah, that's a lot better. A good way to gauge if your head size is correct is to just look at the width of the shoulders. Uh, generally, um, the head will be one third of the width of the shoulders, um, especially in men, uh, that rule tends to be true. Um, women have slightly narrower shoulders, so a lot of the time you can kind of go by the 
the shoulders being like two and a half heads. But, but here you can very, very clearly see that her shoulders, even if they are kind of in side view, they're very tiny. So make that a bit smaller. Make her hair a bit smaller too. So we can start bringing some light into it. I love putting like um, colored light on hair because it just does such interesting things. And like the darker the hair is, the less it will be affected by the light. So because Zoe has uh, almost black hair, it wouldn't be that intense, but I'm giving myself some creative freedom to Play with it a bit more. I'm not too pleased with these shapes though. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick break. Just rest my eyes a bit so I can look at this uh, freshly and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I'm not seeing any jarring mistakes, um, just like the general weirdness that's still there. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to keep working on her hair a bit, uh, not really talk much. Just try to straighten it out uh, because there's not much to say about this stage other than there's just, I'm refining the shapes a bit more. So her head shape is getting better. I think once we straighten out the features proportions a bit more, um, it's gonna start really coming together. But for now, I need to deal with her body um, and her clothing. So right now it's basically just nothing. <laughs> it's just a blob. Um, what I'm gonna do to prepare, uh, to show you kind of what I should have done back then, um, I'm gonna pull in some reference and again, I'm just going to put it in Photoshop. Okay, so this is her in game. I just need this for an outfit reference. There we go. Okay, so I ended up searching um, just a regular scarf instead of circle scarf and I found um, two references for the folds that I think will do. Uh, it's always good to have multiple references of um, a thing you're trying to paint. Just so you have more than one angle, I guess. And so you also don't end up just copying your one reference because that could end up translating poorly to your image. So if you have two, you have more information to work with and it's more easy to bring that into your painting in a way that makes sense. So. What I'm gonna do before I even start working on the scarf is I'm gonna try to draw her shoulders. Uh, again, this comes down to what I've been saying so many times, draw the stuff that's underneath before you start drawing the stuff that's on top. So I'm kind of trying to mimic like this shape that's happening here. I'm still not that great at painting cloth, so this is still a challenge.
sorry, I'm not saying much right now. I'm just trying to make the sketch into an actual painting. And uh, I'm just continuing thinking, thinking like yeah, the way I've been explaining. Um, thinking of the planes, thinking of the light environment, how the different colors of light will affect these objects. Just thinking, 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 while I'm also trying to get rid of the sketch. Yeah, I like this. This is much better than what we had before, so... Look at this blob, and then this. I think it's very important um, to notice what I'm doing with the shapes. So here, even in like my, my quick overpaint of the original shapes, it's still very like... Everything is roughly the same size. Everything is curving the same way, following the same pattern. The edge, very um, smooth. There's not a lot of distinct shapes happening here. And now what I've made sure to do with the help of some real life reference is we have a big shape, we have smaller shapes, we have very small shapes, and we have kind of like this more interesting pattern, shape, shape language that's happening around the edges. And this just adds so much more appeal and interest into your designs. It's very important to think of shape variation and um, it's very important to think of shape variation while you're designing and while you're painting. And, and that means varying size and just varying the general shape of things. So maybe you have some shapes that are like this, maybe you have some shapes like this. You know, you want to vary that shape. You don't want to just like do like a bunch of ovals because that's boring. There's no visual interest there. So now I think it's about time to start uh, bringing this all together into painting that works. I think we've done most of the work already. Like the, the most important changes have been made. Um, we have gone from Hold up a minute. Did I just merge everything? I did. Here we go. Okay. So we've gone from a very uncanny, very dysfunctional painting uh, with no thought to light environment, no thought to design shape language. Features, just a flashy painting that has no structure. Uh, and now it works a lot better. We have the light environment that's semi-cohesive. It makes sense that she's outside. This looks like firelight. It's lighting up her face. Um, and her face itself actually has form now. Um, the same thing goes for the scarf. The scarf was flat before, it was flat and boring. It had a horrible texture slapped onto it uh, because I was too lazy to do this step. Um, and now it's starting to, to work, like the base of it is starting to work. What needs to happen now is um, I need to pull all this together with subtle teas, with blending, uh, I need to improve my brush marks, I need to bring the tree back into the background and the stars, um, and just do a lot of fine tuning, but I want to stress that now I've made the most important changes. Uh, the important changes are not the rendering, um, because this is the base work and this is the work that will make or break the painting. But I do want to make it a bit prettier, <laughs> just for fun mostly. So um, we're gonna, gonna gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, you know, you can kind of see that this painting is more impactful in a way. Like it's more interesting to look at because this right now is very flat. The colors are muted, um, and that's all stuff that I'm gonna address now. Uh, first of all, we can just do like a color edit. Gonna make it more saturated and maybe... Yeah, that's better. And then we can also improve the values. Uh, 
pop it like that. And we need to bring uh, the symbol back into our forehead. I'm just gonna do that now. I think that will help um, make it more interesting. As you can see in, keep going back and forth. Uh, in this painting, I just like, I used a super hard brush and, and just painted this in and the edges are so hard and Again, it's just another element of the painting that looks like it's been pasted onto it. Now I'm gonna actually paint in that symbol with a brush that has some texture so it looks more like it's kind of a part of, part of her actual face. I was going to just give some more thought to how it would curve. So I'm gonna crop away my reference and I'm gonna pull it up whenever I need it. I just need to get the full picture of the actual illustration without that distraction. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have, go ahead and actually pull her more into the painting again, more into focus like that. Now that her hair is massive, this actually works without looking kind of creepy. Um, and we can bring this tree back in, but giving more thought to what it's doing for the composition. I think it works having it over here, but I think... I'm not good at painting trees, I need to pull up some reference for this soon, but... Um, I think if we just kind of give it like a curve, like curving around, just to keep the eye of the viewer inside the frame, I think that would be better. I'm making the fire on the scarf a bit more muted and I'm doing this because of the local value and the local color of the scarf. So what I mean by that is every object has a local color but it also has what I like to call a local value. I'm not sure if that's actually a technical term or not but like every object has its own base value and its own base value range. So her skin is pretty light so when we put a light on her face um, the effect will be pretty dramatic because it has a lot of play uh, in terms of the, its value range right uh, it, it's already pretty light pretty light so it can get pretty light uh, with the scarf it's its base color uh, and its base value is pretty dark it's a dark burgundy scarf so when we put a light on it it's not going to get as light as the skin so there's a difference there, and we need to show that. 
The same thing goes for these blue highlights here. I need to really tone them down to be more of just like a hue shift. Um, I mentioned earlier that cloth doesn't really absorb uh, light that much, or I guess light doesn't really bounce off it that much. It's a very matte surface, so this blue light would also not be as dramatic as I have it right now. I think her mouth is actually too far down. I think that was probably a mistake that I didn't spot in the old painting. Yeah, that's not better. Okay, so I've been looking at this color setup for a while, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and merge down that color lookup layer. Uh, not quite at like 100%, but um, I think like um, 54 should be good. Maybe 60. I'm going to go ahead and make it 60. It looks a lot more moody. Um, so here you can see how washed out it kind of was without this. And this is much more of a convincing um, night scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge this down. So I'm pretty eager to just finish this, to be honest. Um, I've already spent more time than I was planning uh, to spend on it. So I think I'm just going to spend like 30 minutes just getting the rendering a bit more tight and maybe I'll do some voiceover explaining what I'm doing. But basically, I'm just going to do what I usually do, which is make my brush smaller, add some more detail, fix up um, some of the weird edges, and fix up the tree and stuff like that. So I'll be back once I'm done.
I want to briefly go over um, the differences in rendering from back then and now um, because this is another thing uh, that I used to do a lot and that a lot of beginners do as well when they render. Um, you can see that I've gone in with like a very tiny brush, um, especially on the hair, putting a lot of detail like around here with just very small brush strokes and I, I drew in her eyelashes with like a tiny brush. Um, I did some detailing on her lips that was really tiny and everything is just like, like yeah, if you zoom in, it looks sharp. Um, but once you zoom out, first of all, you don't really see it all that much, but it kind of just takes away from the rest of the image as well because it makes it look so sharp and artificial the way I've rendered, uh, especially with these lines that I talked about earlier. Um, but now I'm, even though in some ways I'm putting in more work in terms of um, defining those key features, I'm focusing much more on the values and the colors and the shapes than just the actual um, detail work. Um, so I'm still rendering a lot and um, there's this kind of misconception about rendering these days that uh, render just means like lots of very very small details. Uh, rendering is actually just implying detail. Uh, so you can render in <laughs> two seconds if you're really good. Uh, it's all about just implying that detail so when you're zoomed out it looks like there's um, detail and texture and your elements look polished and vibrant. So for example on her lips, um, they don't look perfect but I would say they look like they have a bit of that texture of lips and they look like they have some shape to them. In my original, um, again it looks like a sticker that's been put on her face. Um, those little lines I made there don't really add anything in terms of the texture, they still just look very smooth and artificial weird. Uh, but here, it actually kind of looks like she has some of those like um, wrinkles in her lips and if you zoom in, they're really just like a few strategically placed brush strokes. Um, it's not like I'm going in with like a four pixel brush and I'm just like, oh yeah, this is rendering. This is what rendering is about. Um, you don't want to do this uh, unless you're going for like a crazy like Ruangia style where where he does use a lot of those like tiny brush strokes but even with a style like that he leaves a lot of room for areas with bigger brush strokes and areas of rest where there's not that much detailing so I want to put some more detail into the eyes because the eyes are kind of the focal point, like her forehead and her eyes. That's what I want people drawn to. So I want to tighten them up just a little bit more, but I'm not going to go in and like draw in her eyelashes like very carefully like that and then just call it a day. What I'm going to do is I want to make the form of her eyelids a bit more clear because right now they look a bit flat and, and there's a bit too much of like a line going on here. I want it to look more like um, it has some volume to it. I want to get rid of that line. I'm also just going to clean up some of these brush marks and maybe I'll add some eyelashes too, but I'm not going to add them with a small brush like this. I'm going to add them with a big brush to make sure that they blend into the rest of the painting and they're not this like sore spot where you can clearly tell someone zoomed in, they use this tiny tiny brush and then they just like placed in some hard lines because that, that will make your painting kind of jarring to look like a lot of the time. Another point now that we're talking about the eye, eyes is uh, for her highlights in her eyes, I just used like a pure white. <laughs> um, which makes no sense for this scene, but it also makes no sense in general. You won't get like pure white 
highlights and eyes. I think most people probably know this, but I still see people do it. Even if you're standing outside and you have the sun in your eyes, it's not going to be pure white. Um, you might find photographs where that's the case. Um, and in that case, it's usually because the camera just couldn't pick it up or because they've been edited. Uh, this is why studying from life is always your best bet, because cameras do alter the reality a bit. And there's a lot of editing going on as well in the photos people use as reference, so be aware of that. And just a good rule is that pure black or pure white won't really um, occur in real life. Like if you had a straight black in real life, it would look like a void or a hole because it just isn't something that occurs in nature. So not to say that you're not allowed to use those colors, but just it's a good rule, especially when you're starting out to kind of try to avoid that and try to work more into your midtones. So here I'm using a very muted color for the highlights in her eyes. I'm not sure they would even be highlighted because um, her eyeballs are so in shadow, but I want to bring some more attention to them. So I'm adding like a bit of a highlight. I'm also adding some from the fire in her other eye. And now that I'm kind of starting to render a bit more, as you can see, I'm moving my brush along kind of the lines of the form. Um, I'm not trying to shade her lower eyelids like this because then you end up with kind of some wacky brush marks that distract from um, the form and the volume of the eye. I'm, I'm running it along here. And this will also give me some brush marks that will imply um, some of the creases that are around the eye. So I can get those in there without going in with that tiny brush and, and, and placing them all manually. Um, and, and that's really the secret to e efficient rendering, to just use your brush marks for all they're worth. There's like a weird hard shadow here. I don't think that would really happen in real life. I mean, she does have very high cheekbones. So maybe, but I'm just going to keep that there because I like it. This needs to have some more light on it. Because again, remember the planes. This is going inwards and then the eyelid pops back out. So it will catch some more light than this top part. If you start thinking in terms of planes and form, instead of just detail, uh, rendering becomes much easier and you end up with a much prettier result and it's easier to kind of know where to stop because when you know, when you can see that your forms are looking like forms, um, you kind of know that you've achieved what you need to achieve.